We called it Sea Quest because I want to do sea, right? But <laughs> caught by your own marketing. I caught my own marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do if the boat gets attacked by Jaws? <laughs> Okay, I will definitely say this has been one of the most stressful projects ever. My biggest apprehensions for the actual attempt to do the world record is, is the endurance side of things. So have we got a boat that will actually take us the distance that we need it to? Every single time we've gone on a field trip, it's just been one tiny thing that set us back. We, we forgot a nut, we forgot a bolt, it, it set on fire and we weren't expecting it to. We spent a lot of evenings and weekends and very late nights doing this and uh, it's, it's been brilliant, it's been worth it, but it's been really challenging and really tiring. The people who, who work on it really care about it and you know, to, to make it successful has been a challenge and, and I think everybody just really wants to see it work. So when we actually get there on the day, it'll be kind of hopefully we've done our maths right and everything will work out and we'll get that world record at the end of it. So yesterday we were out in Brown Sea Island and I'm at home after a very long sleep, after a very long week, thinking about what went wrong with the jet boat. So I've got the ESC here, and we really done a bit of a number on it. It's quite smoky, and it, it's completely fallen apart. Pretty perplexing how that might have overheated. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to order some spare bits, and we're gonna bench test what the actual motor is pulling out of the ESC. So I'm just taking apart the speed controller that fried and you can see that's the bit that powers the Beck. It's all absolutely soaked so I'm wondering if we had some water ingress or or something. Uh, you can see the potting compound is coming out. Uh, I, I can even pull some of the chips off the board so it, it obviously got extraordinarily hot. That, that is not a very happy ESC. I guess it needs more active cooling than passive cooling. If we did 10 miles, it's about 15, 16 yeah. kilometers, 15 and a half kilometers, something like yeah. that. I mean, that's pretty far. I think given all the parameters, I think eight, eight kilometers, eight to 10 kilometers feels about right. And I don't want to change the batteries. And you know, I was saying to Richard, the, the record, we can set whatever uh, record we want. It doesn't make it very autonomous. <laughs> 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 you have to stop halfway in the ocean. Well, I, well I, I, that's what, I mean, that's what I'm thinking. So I don't want to do that. So, I, I, basically, the, the premise, I want to use the boats we've got, or the boat design we've got, and maybe one of the boats we've already printed. But obviously, batteries, LiPo, it sounds like it's the, we're going to get further on it, and then we need to decide which propulsion technology we go for, or do we take both? Well, I think I think we want to set a record that is, and it, is breakable, otherwise you give nobody else the opportunity to participate in, you know, and then we'll go and break it again. I, I mean, you don't look very convinced <laughs> by that at all. Look, I know what you're saying, right? <laughs> I'm saying like, oh, first go. Mm, every other boat has set on fire or something else has gone wrong with it. Yeah, let's, let's first go Denmark. <laughs> it's a great idea. There's something very Viking about setting a, a <laughs> there flaming you, boat There you go, yeah. there you go, yeah. there you go. I think the biggest problem with the external thrusters were making them efficient. Are we now comfortable that we've got a boat that we could that would last eight hours even if we if we run it in a tank. But I, I think I think that's yeah. the thing is that we have to finish up a, a, a prototype now, which, which is almost ready to go. Yeah, um, yeah. We've learned so much. I mean, if if that breaks, there's nothing there that we can't take apart and, and swap over with a completely different yeah um, me mechanism. This, this modular design is, is, is really critical to, to, to getting out and field testing things. In the PLA they were not as accurate and, and sturdy as we hoped, so we reprinted them in a lot higher resolution in nylon, and we've got some nice peak bearing spaces, and you can see that it's just, the mechanism is just so much more beautiful. You can see that we've re-engineered the engine mounting block so that it's completely printed in nylon. It's very rigid, very strong. You could probably stand on it and, and um, it would probably survive. So 
So we spent a lot of time re-engineering all of the packaging of the electronics. You can see we've got our telemetry here, we've got um, some uh, power conversion, we've got a GPS and navigation system, and you can just see it's just one nice package um, that, that sits in, in the boat, which is hot swappable. The other really unique thing that we've done is we've created these waterproof battery enclosures. It's as simple as we've made the, the, the bags bigger, so every time we charge them, we slice it open, we charge it, and we reseal the bags. This is actually water-cooled, this version, but what we've discovered is that even though the box is sealed, as soon as we start squirting water through, we think, isn't that correct, David? We think. <laughs> we seem to be getting water leakage from the coolant hoses that are going into the boxes. Yeah. It doesn't make a lot of sense to use a waterproof sealed box and then pump water in to water cool the stuff inside of it. So we're basically taking the new lid, we've cut a hole in it, and then David's got this metal aluminium plate here. And the idea is that we mount the ESC on the plates and then the coldness of the water will keep that cool and then keep the ESC cool. That's the plan anyway. Yeah, that's the plan. <laughs> We're going to use this silicon rubber to basically seal the ESC. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's magic rubber. It's magic rubber. It stops water from getting you things. I just want to say that Pete's the biggest idiot I've ever had the displeasure of working with. And he's almost as bad as Ryan. And when you put both of them in the same room, they are terrible. Are you talking smack about me on you, video? Do you need some training to use that screwdriver? <laughs> For what I'm about to do with it? <laughs> Probably not. Doing a calibration test, and we've potted the RG pilot in here. So, Gary, when you turn the box, we can see the horizon moving up, down, left, right. So, yeah, all good. I think we're ready to roll. So, quick ballast check in the bath on the uh, one of the older boats. I cut the original ballast into, which I'm going to take out and put in the one that we put together yesterday with the radio unit. So I've used a brick for the battery. Uh, so it's about 500 grams more than the um, battery itself, but obviously we haven't got the electronics box near it, so I guess roughly it's about right. So, very quick rundown of the test rig. We've got a test jet drive, got a test engine, it's now got a cooling jacket on, and in and out pipes. Go around into the ESC, ESC is now actively cooled. We've got our amp clamp, we've got our battery, we can measure voltage, voltage amps. So, no amps. 16.73 volts. And that's the water temperature? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the lowest setting. More? So we're testing the boat at the lowest power setting it has. We're just making sure that the waterproofs in here, all of the coolant pipes are not leaking. We're happy with that. We can see that it's generating a tremendous amount of thrust and that's been running for about 45 minutes now. When we started, we were on 97% power, and now it's 73. Hey Dave, um, how's your uh, waterproof bags? Well, it's waterproof. The water, the water's not falling out, is it? <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about? Really successful testing, first full battery test, 177 minutes so far, and it's at falling consent, so really pleased with that. Mechanically, absolutely sound, no funny vibrations during that period. All in all, new water cooling on the ESC, which seems to be working out very well. And yeah, it's run for a lot longer than we had calculated, so that's really pleasing. So the original plan was to go from Dover in the UK, across to Calais in France, and that's across the English Channel, and it's about 21 miles. But uh, 
Unfortunately, we couldn't get permission from the French Coast Guard to do that, so we had to look for alternative options. And that's quite difficult here in the UK. There's uh, lots of little islands, but they're quite far away. So we looked around and actually the Isle of Wight was probably the best option. And the Isle of Wight is an island at the bottom of the UK. It's separated by a body of water called the Solent. Um, it's relatively calm, uh, generally, depending on the day you pick and the weather. Um, traffic wise, in terms of boats, it's not too bad where we were looking to go. Um, would be about 10 miles out uh, to arrive um, near the Needles and Allen Bay, which is the bay next to it. So we're standing here on Allen Beach on the Isle of Wight. Just come across the Hurst Castle on the mainland. Behind us is the Needles, is where we're going to uh, bring our boat here right onto Allen Beach with the Needles behind us. And this is where we're looking to land. Seacrest boat. 